you do that first, then you can uh, carry on with this uh, video. Hi guys, thanks for dropping in. Welcome to the channel. Um, I'm Rick and uh, in this little clip it's going to be answering uh, a question that I've been asked a few times. Um, if I had my time over again, um, would I choose the Super Adventure S or the Super Adventure R? Um, and possibly another brand altogether. Now, I'll firstly eliminate the other brand altogether. Um, there's currently nothing on the market uh, that I am personally interested in. Slightly, I'd be curious to find out what the Ducati V4S is like, but that's just too expensive and there's no way, even if I did buy that, would take it out on the dirt, drop it, pick it up, carry on and be completely happy about that. Um, I'd always be in the back of my mind thinking, what the heck am I doing to this really expensive bike? Uh, for those of you that have got a massive, massive bank balance, um, go for it, but no, nah, not for me. So apart from the potential interest on a Ducati Multistrada V4S, um, yeah, nothing else. I'm not interested in the GS, the 1250. Um, I'm not interested in the Tiger uh, 1200. Um, I'm, no, there's absolutely nothing on the market that interests me. Um, Super Adventure R or Super Adventure S? A. The Super Adventure R looks stunning. Yeah, it's got all the white paint, uh, spoked wheels, big shock absorbers. Um, you know, it's a fantastic bike. I class that as a surgeon uh, compared to the Super Adventure S, which I class as like a GP or your local doctor. Your jack of all trades and your Super Adventure R is the surgeon. It is a... Uh, What's the word? A specialist in off-road uh, use. Um, it's built for it. It's built like a Land Rover Defender. Um, you know that thing you can take across the world. Don't worry about having to careful of your semi-active suspension. And if you do need to get it looked at, you don't need specialist electronics to be checked out uh, in the middle of the uh, in the middle of Mongolia. Say, you know, you you. You've got you're, you're less stuff to go wrong because there's less electronics. Um, you haven't got to worry about the radar system being knocked about because of vibrations. I mean, that thing is built to go around the world, through jungles, through the desert. Um, there you have it. Um, it comes standard with all the protection you'd probably want. Um, so yeah, that is a surgeon. It's a specialist. Uh, in, in off-road use and basically low maintenance if you're going to, well not necessarily low maintenance but you've got less risk of having to maintain it out in the sticks um, with regards to the electronics and all of that stuff. Now I don't live out in the middle of the outback in Australia, I don't live in Africa where the roads are literally like a uh, you know scene out of a World War II film. Um, I live in the UK uh, I travel mainly in Europe. Um, I might dabble with some popular areas of uh, Africa and Asia, but uh, the chances of me taking this or traveling on any bike um, and making my own roads is very remote. Um, so I don't need a bike of that caliber. Um, what I want is something I can have fun on on track, stick a few slicks on this, and I'll keep up with the fast boys. Um, I want something I can go on the dirt with, as you've seen from my Rally Moto events that I've been to. Um, dropped it, picked it up, mud, gravel, uh, any trails, whatever you want to throw at it, it will do it. Um, you've got all the modes on there. Um, there are compromises because it's a jack of all trades. Like I say, it's the, like your local doctor. Um, it can do a bit of everything. 
um, and, it, and it does it well. So for me, I'm not interested in the Super Adventure R and I would still go with the Super Adventure S. Um, as you can see, I've, I've glammed it up with some decals, which I've got videos on, you know, tank pad, just to spruce it up a bit because it, I admit it, as I've said before, the Super Adventure R comes out of the show, your showroom and you go, wow, that is a hell of a bike. Whereas for me, this came out of the showroom and people will say, wow, that is a nice bike. But the, but the Super Adventure R is, oh, check that out. Now that's kind of like what I was missing. So I've been trying to do stuff just to bring that little bit of X factor to the bike for me. You've all got your own opinions, you know. Some of you don't even like this stuff and some of you are satisfied with the bike as it is. But I'm just trying to answer a question that I've been asked. And like I say, it's all, you need to find out what you want from a bike. And what I want from a bike, I've just ticked off. Track days, off-road days, long distance travel with all the comforts of cruise control, all the suspension, preload settings, ride modes at the touch of a button. Bang, I've got it all in one package. Um, do I miss spoke wheels? No, I mean, I've got spoked wheels on my Tiger 800 XC and they are not tubeless and they admit, I mean, they, you know, they don't, they don't pretend to be tubeless either. Um, and they are a pain in the backside when you have a puncture. Um, you either got to get your tyre levers out on the side of the road and try and fix a flat or pump in some of that rubbish to, you know, moose or whatever, uh, foam, foam in a can, which I'm not too keen on. Either way, it's no substitute for a quick plug, CO2 cartridge, five minutes, bang, you're on, you're on the way. That's what I love about the cast rims. The drawback is you've got to be careful uh, when you're doing like trails and stuff. Um, as long as you're careful, you've got your eye on the, on the uh, path ahead of you. Um, you're not going hell for leather and hitting potholes without knowing about it. Um, and I'm not deflating the tires to kind of your typical off-road pressures. I always keep road pressures in these tires. It's a compromise that I'm willing to make um, because it's a compromised bike for riding in those conditions. Um, I'm not pretending that this is an off-road bike because it's not. It can do some off-road as long as you bear that in mind. So I love the fact that it's got cast rims. I have contemplated getting the KTM spoked, but they are not real tubeless rims in my opinion um, and the amount of times of even my mate Rob um, they come with a sealant and a rubber back gasket or band that goes over the center of the rim that essentially is like a big rubber patch to stop air going out of where the uh, spokes are joined to the rim not like the BMW or the tri new Triumph rims where the spokes are on the outside and it is a true tubeless rim so if you get a puncture, you can just whack in a plug. Those rims also come with their own problems, but you know I'd still rather have those rims, to be honest. I mean, the problem is if you pinch the rim, you bend the outside of the rim on those ones with the spokes on the outside, um, you're pretty much right in the wheel off, you know, or you can't fix the flat um, because it is tubeless. Um, how do you patch that up if you've bent the rim? Anyway, another story, Google it find out for yourself. I'm not getting the KTM tubeless spoke rims um, because A, if you get a, a failure along that gasket, that is again another situation where you can't fix the flat um, unless you carry a tube around with you. So you may as well have tube tires to begin with. Yeah, anyway, uh, I'm happy it's got the cast rims. You ride according to the conditions as long as you're having fun and not stupid. Um, the fact that it's got a lower center of gravity than the uh, Super Adventure R, I'm a short, almost, yeah, I'm a short guy. Uh, it is, has about a, an inch less ground clearance, which to some, an inch makes all the difference. And um, yeah, it helps me with paddling, straddling uh, the bike in difficult conditions. Um, it has near enough an inch less uh, suspension fork travel 
Um, so at the end of the day, it isn't going to be as hardy as the Adventure R off-road, but it is plenty enough for what I want to use it for. Um, so on the rally motor events, I spend all day, two days solid if it's a two day event, um, with it all set up for me to go on the dirt. And then as soon as the event's over, flick a switch, stick it in comfy mode, stick it in sports throttle, heated seats, adaptive cruise control, feet up, well, kind of, chill out 200 mile journey back home. Um, and even play with a few of the fast boys on the twisters if the weather's still light enough. Um, 19 inch front, 17 inch rear, a very road biased setup um, for fast riding. Um, handles a lot better than with a 21 inch front. You can throw a bike with a 21 inch front around on oh, my Tiger 800 XC. Um, I've absolutely thrashed that, but at the end of the day, the geometry is, is in black and white. The Super Adventure R is great for everything else, but it compromises for road use, performance use, should I say. The same as this compromises for off-road use, the Super Adventure R would leave this in the dust, uh, subject to the rider. Um, now, the Super Adventure R, the last time I looked, was about 16 grand, 16,000 pounds approximately, and this is around 15,000 pounds. Um, it's a no-brainer. £16,000, you get all the trimmings, but the sump guard, engine guards, you name it, but you don't get the radar, you don't get all the electronic suspension that you can mess around with at the touch of a button. Um, but it costs more. There's a reason for that, but it's it, it costs more for stuff that I probably wouldn't get the benefit from, like the superior oversized suspension from WP, etc. So you are paying for what you get if you want that. Now, if I spent the same amount of money on the SAR, so I spent £15,000 on the bike and spent £1,000 on the goodies, I could have all the bits that are on the SAR and all the extra bits that the SAR doesn't have. So I've got the uh, bash plate, the engine guards, you know, rad guards. Um, you add it all up, it's more or less the same price as a Super Adventure R. I can retrofit those parts onto this bike. Now, if I'd have bought the Super Adventure R and I wanted adaptive cruise control because I thought, well, you know, I'm not really taking this off-road. Um, I do miss out on all, I miss out on the, you know, semi-active suspension. I mean, yeah, you can do your dialing in, one click here, one click there. But a lot of us, that's a dark art. You know, you're going to look at that and think, oh, God, I don't want to play with that. I don't want to play with this. Um, to a lot of riders, especially of the middle-aged to older generation, you just want to try and get to grips with the computer for a start, which I call this, it's like a supercomputer. Um, you select your ride mode. You're off. That's it. Bang. Your suspension setting changes, you can ch change your preload, you can change your throttle response, um, which I know you can do on the Super Adventure R as well, but the suspension, the semi-active suspension is so clever, um, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away, as well as the adaptive cruise control. Um, and, you know, I've got videos separately about the cruise control, uh, if you wanted to check that one out. I, I demonstrate that literally you don't have to touch anything and it will just follow the car in front or overtake as soon as you indicate. Fantastic stuff. Um, so, do as a dual everything bike, um, I don't think there's anything around at the moment that can touch this. Um, I've tried to kind of modify it up as much as possible to make it tailor-made for me, um, like, you know, powder coated the old silver Touratech racks added some luggage in Perron moto rack with a lot more uh, attaching points rottweiler mounts with crg mirrors um, i like the sar screen because i like clear view in front of me um, and also if i do go over the handlebars on a crash um, off-road um, i don't want my head first going through the, uh, the screen um, added stuff like the uh, headlight protector decals 
Um, so there's a lot you can do to it to to give it that uh, to give it that uh, jazzy jazzed up look that the Super Adventure R comes with as standard. Um, but it is just aesthetics at the end of the day, um, decals and all that. As far as the actual meat goes of this bike, um, yeah, I can't see myself changing this bike for a long time. Um, I've got Pirelli, uh, Pirelli STR rallies. Um, after I changed out from the Mitus, um, which I wrote, I love the Mitus stock tyres. A lot of people don't, but I could have taken those tyres straight on a track and felt comfortable with them. Um, but these semi off road tyres, 50 50s, absolutely blown away to the extent I've put some on my Tiger as well. Um, 149 mile an hour they're rated up to, which for a bike with 160 brake horsepower and 140 newton meters of torque, I can break 100 mile an hour without even knowing it. So for me to want to do some off road and some on road, I wanted a tire that didn't have a speed rating limit to it, limited to 100 or 110, even though I'm not gonna intentionally do those speed limits. Um, I'd like a safety margin. So the Pirelli STR rallies were the best tire choice for me um, to stick on. And uh, yeah, that's my tire of choice now going forward. Um, as for whew, anything else I need to discuss, um, not really um you need to figure out what you want from a bike um if you plan on you know doing one foot two foot drop offs uh tearing through jungles and you know traveling through the the desert um on a regular basis then you probably want to go for the super adventure r but you also need to have skills to back that up. Um, you know, there's no point in buying a Super Adventure R. Well, for me, I couldn't justify buying a Super Adventure R uh, with all the um, improved, hardened suspension, uh, loss of all the bits and bobs that you. I was talking about uh, radar tech pack, uh, radar and um, semi-active suspension. Um, you know, if you want to slide over logs, uh, traverse boulders, um, lifting up the front, bringing it down over another object. I'm assuming you've got the skills to do that. You're quite adept and you already know really what you want from a bike. But if you're the average rider like myself um, that likes to have a bit of a uh, play with this in, and a play with that, then for me, I think you're missing out. I think you're going to miss out on quite a lot uh, that the Super Adventure S offers. Um, and also I think the resale, I think there'll be a bigger market uh, for the Super Adventure S come the time to sell it or pass it on. Um, because the Super Adventure R is a surgeon, it is specifically built for a, for a hardened life. Um, whereas the Super Adventure S, you know, it's made for everything, a bit of everything. Go down the shops, get your groceries, take your wife out for a ride, uh, pop out for a quick run around Brands Hatch Racetrack, and then uh, take the shortcut home through the forest and uh, woodland uh, and go through a few fords at the same time and then get back in time for tea. I think that just about sums it up. Um, so, sorry this has dragged on. Uh, how, how long is this? It's about 18 minutes, something like that. Um, it hasn't been a pretty vid with videos and pictures. Um, it literally is just an answer to a question uh, that I've been asked a few times. Um, so I hope that one answers that. So, uh, what next? Until then, I'll, that's right, I'm freezing to death. Uh, I've got to put the heater on. Uh, until then, I'll uh, carry on working on the uh, Cotswold Rally video uh, full version and hopefully have that out soon. Cheers guys.